All right, so we have a point Z over here, and we want to know the surface charge density. <clears throat> we want to know the electric field at this point, and we have um, a whole disk of charge, essentially. So first thing we need to do is develop a strategy. The best way to do this that I've seen is get the electric field, the sm a small electric field due to a ring of charge and then we will take that ring of charge and we'll integrate it through rho So basically, if we get one of these rings, right, we can integrate through all the, the rings going out in the circle, and that will get us a, uh, <clears throat> a disk of charge. Similar to like when you do a line charge or anything like else, the same idea. You always get a small, a small piece of it and then integrate through. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get a ring of charge equation. charge equation and that would be equal to z and I'm having trouble I hate doing this 4 pi epsilon naught dq squared plus z squared to the three halves and this is um, this is something you can find online there's a lot of people have done um, the derivation for this I'm not going to do that in this video because it's we're going to be doing uh, the derivation for a disk um, but you can find that on YouTube for sure so we have this the first thing we need to do is find out um, how DQ relates to our problem so dq in a ring charge is going to be the rho s the surface charge times some area because um, you can you can imagine that this ring has some sort of area and you know rho um, rho s is like charge over over some area so that gives you the amount of charge you have right so we need to find out what dA is in our problem to further expand on this dQ. And dA in our problem is going to be 2 pi rho d rho. And the reason why is because you have um, you have a circle, it's, the circumference is 2 pi r, right? And um, you would just multiply that by this would be some sort of d rho right there. And another way you can think of it is it's like um, if it was like a rectangle, the length would be 2 pi rho by the, you know, um, by circumference essentially, and then this would be just d rho, and that would give you your area. So now you have, you have dA, now you, um, put those two together. 2 pi rho rho s and dp d rho okay now we're going to plug in this into here okay this dq is going to go into here so that would give us de is equal to 2 pi Rho s, um, I'll put the z first, this z right here, and rho. So that's all these components. 
except for the D row. Um, I'll put the D row over here. And this would be 4 pi epsilon naught rho squared plus z squared. These will these will cancel. This will be a two, so d will be rho s z p d rho. I, I keep saying p um, for rho, which is because it looks like a p to me, but it's it's a rho. Rho squared plus z, because we're dealing with cylindrical coordinates, right? So. Okay, so what's next? The next thing you need to do, oh, yeah, the next thing you need to do is just integrate, right? You see how there's an there's an integral here, and it's um, it's not the easiest, but this is a doable integral, right? So I'll separate everything. I'll separate everything out by what's constant and what's not. So this row S is constant, Z is constant. Um, oh, that's, there's, a, there's a two here, sorry. Two epsilon naught is constant. And that's everything that's constant. The rest would be integral and this would be a row. Um, the way I like to do these is I, I like to use u substitution. So I will say u is equal to rho squared plus z squared. Du would be two rho um, with respect to d rho. So that would mean d rho would be one over two p du. So now we plug in the um, d rho value. And we plug in our u. I'll just leave this like this for now. Um, so I'll plug in this here. Over two p p. P squared plus Z squared. Um, these P's will cancel. Oh, shoot. This is, this is supposed to be our U. Sorry. Because I'm just plugging in this U that I have here, right? So this would be U. Three halves. This p will cancel with that p, and then we'll be left with du. Okay, so now this is an integral. Um, I guess technically it'd be from zero to, to um, whatever we're integrating from here to, which would be zero to, to like row, like the outside of the row edge. It'd be, you know, we're integrating from here to here. But basically, since um, you can kind of think of this as an infinity, and the only element that we're concerned with is this, this disk. So, oh shit. So this E, this DE is just going to become a full E, because it's the only um, electric field that you have. Or are concerned with, at least. So that just becomes E. Because now we encompass all the, we have all the electric field inside that disk covered, essentially. Um, this will be a one half outside here. The integral, I'll just do it like this. 
So now we do the integral. This will this will uh, turn into a negative one half, right? So that ends up bringing over a negative two, and this will be u to the negative one half. And I should have said this in the beginning, but we're we're integrating from like zero to the to the edge of the row. I'll just call it row edge. So we're integrating from here to here. So this is row h. It's 0 0.2. It's a constant number. But I like to leave it out because then you have an equation left over that you can use for more than just this problem. So these will cancel. We plug in our u again. This will be a negative one. And then we plug in our u, which will be, I'll do it like this, uh, p squared plus z squared to the negative one half. Or you can write it, I'll just write it like this. I'm just going to put it in fraction and square root. And we still haven't evaluated the uh, actual value there, so now we'll do that. This p will go to zero. So this buff goes to z squared. That'll turn to a z, right? So this cancels with this. That'll turn to a z. I'm going to distribute this z. And I'll distribute the negative one. So we end up with e. So this will come up front, it'll be positive, and that'll be, um, I'll do it in steps, I'll leave the z out, that'll be 1 over z minus 1 over z squared, alright, now, now I'm bringing in the z. This will be a z plus z squared. So this this is e due to the disk of charge equation and as long as you know um, how big your disk is the, the edge of it and, and how far away um, your point of interest is to the disk you can you can answer any problem and you have to know row s so for us our row s was 
Um, I forget. P edge. 0.2 and Z was 0 0.5. Um, these are meters, technically, I think. Um, two microcoulombs per meter squared. So now, if you plug in all your Equations, I think you get, um, I believe you get 8.1 volts per meter. But really, that's just arithmetic. This is the, this is the real answer right here. So, hope that helped. Bye.